Disclaimer This video has been re-uploaded to decrease the loud music and to improve the quality. Enjoy! Hey everybody, it's The Queen here and I'm back with another exciting video. As you can tell by the title, in this video, I'll be teaching you guys how to use Microsoft Access with NVDA. Yes, this video is finally here. This video has been suggested by many persons and I finally have this tutorial out for you. This will be a series with many parts in which I'll be teaching you how to create tables, how to create a form, how to run queries, and also how to make reports in Microsoft Access. So let's get right into it okay so here is a little information on Microsoft Access before we get started Microsoft Access is a relational database program and it's mostly used to keep track of data such as customers orders and assets it also allows you to create forms write queries and create reports based on the data within access the main objects are tables queries forms and reports there are also other objects, but we won't be getting into those in this tutorial. So firstly, we will need to open Microsoft Access. So a quick way to do it, let's go to your start menu, so press your Windows key. Start window, search window, search box edit blank. Then start typing access. A access, app, press right to switch preview one of five. Then enter. Access, new grouping, new grouping, featured list, blank database, blank database, alt, F, L. Now, right here where it says blank database, press enter. Database 1 edit selected database 1. Now, here is where you will put the name of your database. So, I want to call it tutorial database. T-U-T-O-R-I-A-L space T-A-T-A-B-A-S-E. Now, the next thing for you to do is to press tab. Button browse for a location to put your database alt F. W. And you will enter on here and choose the file location so that's where you want the database to be saved. I've already chosen that so I won't click on this option. But after you're finished choosing that you'll tab again. Create button alt F C. Then press enter. Grid. Now I know it says grid but what it does is places you into an empty table. And this table is in what we call datasheet view. So in Access, there are two main views for the table. You have datasheet view and you have design view. Datasheet view is where after you set up the fields, you will be able to enter the actual records in the table. While in design view, that is where you get to set up your different column headers, which are called fields and their data types and a description if you find it necessary. So this table doesn't have any fields or anything inside of it already. So what we need to do is to go into design view. So in order to go into design view, first we have to go into the menu. So we'll press the alt key. Ribbon tabs tab control expanded. Table tools grouping. Fields tab selected alt, y, jb7 of 8. And it says selected so we can just tab. So press tab. Fields grouping. Views grouping. View split button collapsed view alt, jb. W. And it's a split button. Note, to open a menu that is a split button, you would use your Alt plus your down arrow. So, let's do that. Datasheet view checked Alt, J, B, W, H. So you see that it's in datasheet view. Now we'll down arrow to design view and press enter to open it. Design view not checked Alt, J, B, W, D. Or you can also use your space bar. Save as dialog. Table name colon. Edit Alt plus and selected table 1. Now you realize it will ask you to save the table. Anytime you switch from a view to another view, it will ask you to save the changes to your table. No, I haven't already saved this table. So I want this table name to be called customers because I'm running a t-shirt business. So I'll type it. C-U-S-T-O-M-E-R-S. -E then I can just click enter. ID edit ID. Now, it says ID Edit ID. So what the design view is allows you to edit the different field names, which are the column headers, and the data types of those different fields. So, it's my customers table. So I wanted to list my customers and also different information about my customers. Now what Access uses, this part right here that they already has as default, which is called ID, this field name. Access uses something in which we call a primary key, which is a unique number or ID which is given to each record so we can use it to identify it now I don't just want my field to be called ID I want to be more specific I want to say 
customer ID. So in order to edit this field, it's already selected on the field with ID. In order to edit it, I would just start typing. So let me start typing customer ID. Caps lock on. Capsi. Caps lock off. U S T O M E R space. Caps lock on. Cap I. Cap D. Caps lock off. Now I'm finished typing in the name of this field. Now I want to choose the data type for this field. So I would tab over to the part that says data type. Grid table. Row 1 row not selected. Row 1. Column data type. Auto number collapsed. Auto number collapsed. Before we get into the data types part, take a listen to this. Here is a list of data types that you can use for your fields in your database. Number. This is used for numerical data. Large number. This is used for larger numerical data. Date slash time. This is used to record dates and time. Currency. This is used for monetary data. Auto number. This is a unique value generated by access for each new record. Short text. This is used for alphanumeric data. Names, titles, etc. and allows for up to 255 characters. Long text. This is used for large amounts of alphanumeric data, for example, sentences and paragraphs, and it allows for about 64,000 characters. Yes slash no. This is a boolean and uses a checkbox to determine if the data is true or false. OLE object. This can be used for pictures and graphs. Hyperlink. This is used for a link addressed to a document or file on the internet or on your computer. Attachment. This is used to attach files such as pictures, document, and spreadsheets. And this field can contain an unlimited amount of attachment per record. Calculated. This is used to create an expression that uses data from one or more fields. You can designate different result data types from the expression. So now, as you heard a while ago, if we let it stay at auto number data type, you wouldn't have to put in a customer ID for yourself. What I realize is that once you go over to your next column header or your next field and start typing in the record, Microsoft Word will give it a unique identifier starting from the number one. But I don't want that. I want a custom customer ID. So I want to change this collapsed box right here. There are two ways to do this. Just like how I just show you the different data types, you can just start typing like say half of the name of that data type or just type out the full name and then you tab over to your next field. Or if you don't remember your different data types, there's a way to go through this collapsed box. What I realize is that it's not like regular collapsed boxes where you just press your down arrow and you go through. With access, you open collapsed boxes by using your alt plus your down arrow but i realize once you start down arrowing through the box nvda won't announce you the option that you're on so you would have to alt plus down arrow to open it down arrow once then use your insert plus tab key to hear the option that you are currently selected on and if that's not the option you want you'd have to down arrow again and use the insert plus tab key again and continue doing that until you hear the data type that you want but I think the most effective method is knowing the data type that you want and just typing it in yourself. So right here, I want short text. So let me type it in. S-H-O-R-T space. Now I already have short, so I can just tab away and it will put in the short text for me. Edit blank. Grid table. Row 1 row not selected. Row 1. Column description left paren. Optional right paren. And I just tabbed by the way. So this is where you can add the description if you would like to put in a description for your field. But I don't find that necessary right now so I won't do it. But let me shift tab for a second to let you show that it automatically puts in the short text. Row 1, column data type, short text collapse, short text collapse. And there it is. Now let's tab until we hear it say row 2 to go to the next field. Row 1, column description left paren, optional right paren. Row 2 row, row 2, column field name. Now, I want the customer's name to be in this field. Now, you can choose to have it first name, different from last name, but I just want customer name in just one field by itself. So, let me type that in. Capsi, caps lock, U-S-T-O-M-E-R, space, cap, cap, N, caps, A, M, E. Now, let me tap to the data type. Row 2, row not selected. Row 2, column data type, short text collapsed, short text collapsed. And it already has in short text. Now, let me tap to my row 3, which would be my third field. Row 2, column description, 
Rosrero, Rosri, call a field name. Now, I want the customer's address to be in here. So let me type in address. And I want to know one thing to you. When you are entering the different field names, or sometimes even entering data in the data sheet view in Microsoft Access, if you make a mistake, say you type a S instead of a D, and you backspace, it's not like in Microsoft Word, if you backspace a S, you'll hear it say S. NVIDIA will not announce to you that something has been backspaced. So I just want to note that to you. So let me tab over to my data type short text edit short text and that's the data type that i want so let me go to my next field row three Co row four row now i also want the customer's email so let me put that in caps lock cap cap m a i l tab to data type short text edit short text then tab to my next field row four column description left paren optional right per row five row row five column field name now the last thing i want for my customer is their phone number so let me type that in caps lock cap caps lock h o n e C cap cap caps u m b e r tab to the data type short text edit short text and for my phone number i'm going to put a space in between the numbers or probably even a dash or a hyphen. So I'm going to leave it at short text. And that's how I want my fields to be set up for this customer table. Now we need to go back to the datasheet view so that we can enter our records into the table. And I must note that every row represents one record in Microsoft Access. So first what I would do is save my table because if I just switch to datasheet view, it will prompt me to save my table anyway. So let me just save it by using Ctrl plus S. Now, Let's go to my menu, so Alt. Ribbon tabs tab control expanded. Table tools grouping. Design tab selected Alt, Y, JD 7 of 7. Then tab. Design grouping. Views grouping. View split button collapsed view Alt, JD, W. Alt plus down arrow. Data sheet view not checked Alt, JD, W, H. Then I'll enter on this. Edit. Now you realize that it just says edit, but it doesn't tell me the row number or the field name that I'm currently in on. So I know that it's customer ID, but I can just simply right arrow and left arrow back over to where I am to know which row or column I'm in. Row one, row one, column customer ID. Okay, so it tells me I'm in the column customer ID. And I said that I wanted it to be unique, a mixture of numbers and letters. So let me do something easy like one TQ for the queen. Caps lock on. 1. Cap T. Cap Q. Now, in order to go over to the next column while in the same row, you can either use your side arrows or you can use your tab. So, let me use my right arrow right now to go over into the next column. Row 1. Column customer name. Edit blank. Now, let me type in a name. Caps lock on. Cap E. Caps lock E. S caps lock. Cap S. Caps lock off. T. E. Double A. R. T. Then right arrow to the next column. Grid table. Row 1. Row not selected. Row 1. Column address. Edit blank. And type in his address. Caps lock on. Cap cap I N G S T O N space five. Then right arrow. Grid table. Row one row not selected. Row one column email. And enter his email. B S T E W I E at G M A I L dot C O M. Then right arrow. Row one column phone number zero 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 edit zero. And let's edit his phone number. So it's Jamaica. So eight seven six eight seven six. Spay three six three spay four six three four and now i know that i am at the last column in my row and i've just created my first record no in order to create another record in which you can edit and you're at the last column in the row that you're currently editing the way to create that new record is either to use your tab key or your enter key so let me use my enter key right now edit blank grid table new row 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 two column customer id and you realize i'm now in row two so i'll go ahead and i'll add about four more records and then i'll get right back to you but one thing i must tell you before you go once you're on any row say i have already entered five records and i realize hmm i want to enter a new record under Bob Stewart at the top. If I go up to the row with Bob Stewart and I use the keystroke control plus enter, it will create an empty record right under Bob Stewart. Now I am finished doing all the records that I need to do in this table. But one thing I forgot to tell you before I went to type in my records. You will realize 
After entering your records, you can use all four arrow keys to navigate around this records table to hear the different records. You will also realize that in each cell, NVIDIA will announce what is in the cell twice. So don't think that if you have two in the cell and it says two, two, that means it's two twos in the cell. It is just reading it twice. Now I'm finished with this table. So I want to close this table. So what I will do is save it first. So that's control plus S. Then I would use control plus F4 to close just this table. All access objects button all access objects. Now let me show you. If you want to go back to that table to open it, if you hear this all access objects button, you can press enter. Temporary context menu menu temporary context menu pop dash up menu then down arrow until you hear table list custom custom button Object type checked object type button no tables and related views tables and related views button T then click enter here Customers grouping expanded customers colon table button customers and there we go and if i want to open the customer table i would press enter on here and as we create different tables you will realize that this list will list all those different tables that you created while you have a table open if you also want to get over to this table list to open another table what you can do is use your f6 key until you hear the list of the tables and then you down arrow or up arrow to the table that you want and press enter but wow, this video has been a mouthful and I have to end this video before it gets too long. But for the last thing for this video, sometimes you want to do something to your columns like rename the field or you realize you don't want that field name again or by sorting it, changing the size or maybe hiding it or deleting it. There's a way in which we can do that. First, you would have to go into that column or that field that you want while in the datasheet view. Then you would use Ctrl plus spacebar to select that column and then you would press your applications key and down arrow through that menu and select any of those options that you want. By the way, for those who don't have an applications key on their keyboard, a quick alternative is Shift plus F10. So there you go guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you learned a lot and remember if you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe and turn on that notification bell to be notified when I'll post the next video. Be sure to also comment below and let me know what you think about this video. And if you have any inquiries, be sure to use my email which will be found down in the description below to contact me. But stay tuned for the next video in which we will be creating another table from scratch and we'll also be showing you how to import tables from excel in to microsoft access so thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time for those who want to access a transcript for this video you can visit my website the link will be down below in the description and you can use the quick links on the videos page in order to get to the access series quickly